So we're going to uh, have a discussion of some uh, basic geology, some principles of basic geology. I'm going to uh, just, you know, declare it as a review, um, although you may not have seen all these things before. Um, but so we'll start with the main the main rock types and just some of the basic things about them. So sedimentary rocks these accumulate at the earth's surface. And the reason that we're that we're going back to this is um, one of the main goals of, of structural geology and uh, geologic mapping is to understand the, the, the geologic history of an area and the geologic history um, uh, is recorded in both the structures and you know basic information from the from the rocks themselves, um, so it's important to you know, kind of understand what the range of different uh, possibilities of you know you know that rocks, the, you know what the evidence is from from rocks in terms of what um, what they've experienced. So sedimentary rocks, uh, there's two two main types. There's detrital, and these are sort of bits, or we could call them clasts, pieces of, of other older rocks, clasts that are transported from an eroded source. So we'll be talking a lot about um, geologic events. So if you have a uh, detrital sedimentary rock, like a sandstone, um, right away you've got sort of two events. You have, uh, you know, the formation of some older rock and then the erosion and, um, and then deposition of another rock. So actually three, three events. Um, so the size of the of the pieces, um, either so this is an abbreviation for conglomerate or a breccia, um, is the, the coarsest size. Then you have a sandstone, a little bit um, a little bit finer. Siltstone, and then a mudstone. So you're going progressively. Finer and finer grained to the right here. Okay, so the difference here between a conglomerate and a breccia is the conglomerate, the the, the large class are rounded, and the, the breccia they're angular. So you might remember that things that are more rounded have traveled further. But in general, here we have coarse, fine. So this is a this is a spectrum, the other type of sedimentary rock is a chemical sedimentary rock. So these um, precipitate from earth surface. from solution. So there's particles that are dissolved in water and they, they, they come out of the solution. So this is limestone, dolostone. So dolostone is like limestone, except it has a little bit of magnesium. Chert, which is silica, and evaporites. 
So, you know, for example, gypsum is a evaporitic mineral or, or salt, table salt. Next, we'll talk about igneous rocks. So there's, uh, we can categorize these different ways. Um, one way is the, the composition. So if, if they have a lot of, mag, um, if they have a lot of iron and magnesium, actually, um, th this word may fic actually kind of comes from this magnesium iron, um, Uh, the letters made up of those. Let's see, Mag iron magnesium rich. And felsic. So if they're silica rich, we call them felsic. And then they can either crystallize underground which we call intrusive. Deep underground. Or they can be erupted at the surface, extrusive. And so the, the common name for a mafic intrusive rock is gabbro. For a felsic intrusive rock is granite. And then the extrusive equivalents are basalt and rhyolite. And there's a bunch of other names. Um, rhyo, oops, rhyolite. There's a bunch of other names, andesites and dacites, and but this is the basics. Um, and then we have metamorphic rocks which are formed from either uh, an igneous or a sedimentary, what we call protolith. So the original um, rock material. So these, these recrystallized in solid state from a protolith. And there's two general types, contact metamorphism. So uh, in this case, this, this is heating due to an igneous body. So there's a clear relationship between Oops, metamorphism and plutonic heat source. So let's let's back up just a second. Um, another word for for intrusive here is plutonic. And we also have regional metamorphism. So this is a, where there's a large scale recrystallization due to burial. deep in the crust, greater than 10 kilometers, typically. Okay, so the same, the same, you know, metamorph, the same rock you might pick up could have been metamorphosed for by, you know, 
as part of a regional metamorphism or contact metamorphism. Just looking at one rock, you wouldn't know the difference. You got to look at the a map. You got to look at the regional relationships to figure that out. Um, in terms of classifying an individual rock, there's there's basically three ways um, that that's done. So the first is is textural. So this really is just this has to do with the appearance. So, and, and a lot of that has to do with the grain size. So if we can't see grains, we call it a slate. If we can see a few grains, and there's sort of a shiny, um, actually, technically, just the fact, just the presence of a shiny layering, um, uh, but, but not really, not seeing grains. We can see some, a few, a few might be in there, but generally not seeing individual grains as a phyllite. Then when we see, when we uh, have coarse grains that are identifiable with a, um, with a hand lens, call it a schist. And if it gets really hot, uh, it, we call it a gneiss, which has layers of um, you know, different compositions. We also have compositional classification of, of metamorphic rocks. So we have marbles, which come from metamorphosed uh, carbonates, limestones and dolostones. We have quartzite, which is a metamorphosed sandstone sedimentary rock, both of these. Um, we have green schist and blue schist and amphibolite. So these are all, um, all three of these are metamorphosed basalt. But depending on the degree of in the conditions of metamorphism, it has different names. And then we have what we call metamorphic facies or grades. So this has to do more with the the severity of the temperature and pressure that they've experienced. So these have similar names, same names as some of these things. So um, they're named after what happens to a metabasol at different temperatures. So the lowest temperature typical, typically um, that we notice is blue schist or green schist facies. And these form at 300 to 400 degree temperatures, degrees Celsius. If the rocks get to higher temperatures, we call them amphibolite. Amphibolite face these rocks, so around 500 degrees. And then if they get really cooked, granulite facies. This would be like 650 to 750 degrees C. So where we're really going with this here is the idea of geologic events. This is super important. So the distribution of rocks and their contact relationships describe geologic events.
And these events are going to be in one of the following categories. Deposition. So if we see if we we see a sandstone, there's there that implies that there was a geologic event that that was the deposition of the of the sandstone. Igneous rocks, if we see them, that implies that there was an in, sort of an intrusive or sorry, an intrusion or an eruption. So the event is that you know, igneous rocks intruded or they erupted. Metamorphism. is a third type. And all three of these are, are, are events that form rocks. So if we see a quartzite, we have, we have two events. There was a deposition of a sand, sandstone and then a metamorphism to turn the sandstone into a quartzite. So it's important that you have that the background we just went over in order to really um, make a good evaluation of, of the geologic events, in other words, the geologic history. So another one, erosion. Faulting. Tilting and folding. So there's seven, seven main uh, geologic events. Three of them that can that are responsible for forming rocks. Four of them that are th things that can happen to the rocks. Um, sort of structural things. We've talked about faulting in, in detail. We'll talk more about folding. And the last part of this are the geologic rules. So these, these are sort of like, you know, of course rules can be broken, but there's eight, eight sort of general things to just have in the back of your mind related to rocks and their and geologic events. So non anamorphic layered sequences have a uniform direction of younging. So this, this goes back to when we were talking about the way up. So that uniform direction of younging is, is, is perpendicular to bedding. So in other words, a way up. So sediment, this is just saying sedimentary rocks had, you know, have generally have layers and those layers are, are sequentially laid down so that there's, if you look at the layers, you can, you can go up and down in time, basically. Number two, preserved rock strata are usually deposited in horizontal sheets parallel to Earth's surface. So what that means is 
if we find sedimentary rocks at some angle, you know, dipping at some angle, 20 degrees, 40 degrees, that means they've been tilted, okay? Because when we look around at, at rivers, lakes, ocean basins, the, the, the rocks that are being deposited are, are, are essentially horizontal, no more than a couple degrees. Um, strata, so these rock layers, tend to be laterally continuous. until thinned to zero thickness or but an edge of a depositional basin. So basically this one means um, Geologic layers don't don't tend to sedimentary layers, you know, at, at a large scale don't don't tend to just end. They don't just end abruptly. Like they tend to get thinner. You know, if you find some quartzite layer, it tends to go on for a long distance and gradually get thinner. Um, usually doesn't just end abruptly. Intrusions, number four, intrusions are younger than the rocks they intrude. So this one might seem kind of obvious. Um, we call that rocks they intrude the country rock. So that's like the stuff that's bit that was there already. Intrusive contacts form at any angle relative to Earth's surface. So unlike the sedimentary rocks that were, you know, we can we know that they were originally horizontal. Uh, the boundary between a, a granite uh, and some metamorphic rocks could have could have originally been in any angle. So we we can't in, infer tilting necessarily. Number five, metamorphic foliations. So this is. Um, or I'll introduce another word, cleavage. So we're gonna talk about these in, in more detail later, but uh, foliations and cleavage are uh, planar layering that develop, that's not sedimentary, that develops um, when rocks are, are strained at, at high temperatures. So metamorphic foliations or cleavage um, die out over many kilometers and more importantly they form at any angle so just like the intrusive contacts so the the foliation the layering of a metamorphic rock will tend to go on for a long, a long distance and the Manhattan Schist is a great example of that. Um, it has a, a layering and a tilting, all you know, from one end to the other, of uh, more or less of Manhattan. Um, and we don't know if that what if that that uh, layering that we see if that used to be if it's been tilted. It could have formed at the orientation it is. And we will give some examples of these rules soon. Number six, detrital 
sedimentary rocks. Contain information. about previous events and conglomerates are especially useful for this because there's nice big chunks of some old rock so if you find a conglomerate so conglomerates a coarse sedimentary rock um, so if you find a uh, an amphibolite a metamorphic basalt in a in a chunk of it in a in a um, in a conglomerate, you know you've got quite a few geologic events right there because um, you have well you have the deposition of the conglomerate you know, but before that there must have been a a, a basalt so there was a there was an eruption of a basalt and then it was metamorphosed into a amphibolite. And then how did that get to the surface? So there must have been an erosion event. And then there was a deposition event where that stuff that was eroded was, was um, deposited to form the conglomerate we're looking at. So the trital sedimentary rocks are very useful. Metamorphic rocks. Form either so we've already said this, form either from igneous or sedimentary rocks. And finally, geometric truncations of one planar surface by another indicate truncated surface is older. So this is kind of like in the cross bedding example where we, where we have these layers and then there's some other layers on top. So obviously this stuff that got cut off is, is older. Partly we know that from what our rule about Strata at number three, strata tend to be continu laterally continuous. You know, so these layers that we just see suddenly cut off, um, you know, they they didn't they they, they wouldn't have formed that way. So these these um, this this lecture is actually very it's a pretty important one. Um, so. You want to you want to have this material down. This is pretty much review. It should be from 106. In any case, it's. Um, I, it, but I realize that a lot of times the students um, don't re don't really remember this, or it was was presented in different ways. And so it's this is, but this is going to really this is key because we're going to be looking a lot at geologic maps and trying to interpret them. And this we need this foundation in order to do that. So. Um, go over this um, and and make sure you understand it make sure she, you know all these words that we we've we've used and um, the the next video will give you some examples of interpreting geologic events